Today we are going to talk about the elbow. In this talk, we will cover the anatomy, history, examination, and common problems related to the elbow. First, the anatomy. Important parts of the anatomy are the bones, muscles, tendons, ligaments, and neurovasculature, as well as the bursa and synovium. First, we will cover the bones. Important bones in the elbow are the radius and ulna, as well as the humerus. Muscles responsible for flexing the elbow are the biceps brachii and brachialis. The muscles responsible for extending the elbow are the triceps brachii. The flexor muscles of the forearm attach onto the medial epicondyle of the humerus. The extensor muscles of the forearm attach onto the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. The olecranon bursa is located on the olecranon. Next, the history. When taking a history, an easy way to remember the common complaints is to think of the PSL, squared. This stands for pain and paresthesia, swelling and stiffness, and locking and looks funny for deformity. There may also be a history of previous trauma, repetitive strain injury, or inflammatory arthropathies such as rheumatoid arthritis. Next, the examination. In the examination of the elbow, it is important to look, feel, and move the joint. It is important to look for any skin abnormalities, muscle wasting, obvious deformities, or any swelling, particularly in the posterior lateral recess. On palpation, you should feel the lateral epicondyle, radial head, and posterior lateral recess, the triceps insertion and the olecranon tip, as well as the medial epicondyle and ulna nerve. On movement, a quick screen is done by flexing and extending the elbows as well as pronating and supinating with the elbows flexed to 90 degrees. In passive movement, the examiner then puts the patient through the same motions as in active movement. Resisted movement is then done, which tests the power of the muscles. With this, the Jurgensen test is performed through resisted supination, a biceps test. The speed test and hook test are two further tests which test the integrity of the biceps tendon. The elbow drawer test is then performed with the patient lying supine to test for instability. Another instability test is the pivot shift test, which is also performed with the patient supine with the arm overhead and supinated. The elbow is then flexed with an axial load applied and a vulgus force applied to the elbow. The final stability test is done by applying a varus and vulgus force to a slightly flexed elbow. The elbow flexion test is done to determine the presence of cubital tunnel syndrome. Next, common problems of the elbow. Inflammation of the lateral epicondyle is called lateral epicondylitis, also known as tennis elbow. This is a repetitive strain injury characterized by pain over the lateral epicondyle with radiation down the extensive forearm muscles and exacerbated by resisted extension and passive flexion. Various conservative and medical treatment options are available with surgical options reserved for cases failing to respond within 18 months. Conversely, Inflammation of the medial epicondyle is called medial epicondylitis, also known as golfer's elbow. Also a repetitive strain injury, it is pain over the medial epicondyle with radiation down the flexor forearm muscles, may have signs of cubital tunnel syndrome, and is worse on resisted flexion and passive extension. Again, various conservative and medical treatment options are available, with surgical options reserved for cases failing to respond within 18 months. Biceps tendonitis occurs due to repetitive microtrauma, degeneration, or a small tear, with pain occurring over the biceps tuberosity and radiating up the biceps. On examination, the patient may have tenderness over the biceps tuberosity, a positive Jurgensen test, and a positive speed test. Conservative and medical treatment options are recommended. 
Triceps tendonitis also occurs due to repetitive microtrauma, degeneration or a small tear at the insertion. Pain occurs over the olecranon tip which is worse on resisted extension of the elbow. Treatment options are the same as above. Olecranon bursitis can be due to chronic irritation such as in student's elbow, inflammatory arthritis, gout and septic bursitis. Treatment includes treating the underlying cause and symptomatic treatment. Posterior olecranon impingement occurs due to repetitive elbow hyperextension. On examination you'll find loss of full extension, pain on extension and tenderness over the olecranon tip. Treatment is to avoid hyperextension and conservative and medical measures. Surgery is a last resort. Arthritis can be divided up into septic, inflammatory, degenerative osteoarthritis and post-traumatic osteoarthritis. On examination, you will find signs of inflammation, creptus and locking, and a capsular pattern. Investigations include screening for inflammatory arthropathies and imaging. Treatment includes treating the cause and symptomatic relief.